Howdy y'all, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about the first self-propelled wheelchair. And they say this was created by Stephen Farfler in Nuremberg in 1655. And they say his invention of his self-propelled cart predates the tricycle and the bicycle or was the first um, basically interpretation of a vehicle with a sort of gear like a bike or a trike. And they say Stephen Farfler was a renowned watchmaker in Nuremberg. And he also was a paraplegic. And for this reason, he had a very difficult time getting around Nuremberg. And with his intricate skill in the use of gears, they say he invented a self-propelled cart where he would use his arms basically to rotate a gear that would power this cart forward and they say this predates all other renditions of a wheelchair and also a gear on a trike or a bike so i found that to be very interesting that a watchmaker from nuremberg by the name of stephen farfler is given this credit and then if you try and do research about stephen there really isn't a lot on the internet about him, at least not that was translated into English that I could find. So it's just interesting that we have this character the whole way back in 1655, basically inventing this sort of uh, chain on a gear. I discuss this because they say that this predates the modern self-propelled wheelchair. And this design seems to be um, a little more intricate and I get into that because they also mention James Heath. And James Heath was a designer and a inventor from England. And they say that he basically took the modern Chase Lounge chair and he put it onto a cart. And they give him credit as inventing the bath chair. And this chair was also used for people that were paraplegic or injured. And they could be pulled in this cart by an animal or they could be pushed from behind so it could be used either way it's a really cool design it basically looks like a chase lounge in modern times and little did i know the word chase is actually just another word for chair so something you learn new every day i guess now i mentioned that and i want to tie england into this because advanced through time and you have by the late 1800s these self-propelled carriages getting a lot more advanced to the point that by the turn of the century we're looking to incorporate motors into these carriages for the disabled and then we have by about the 1920s both gas-powered and electric powered carriages that are being provided to victims of war and those who have injuries from war and those that have different disabilities that couldn't get around and i found it to be really interesting and really inspiring almost to hear how much we were doing for people back then and when talking about great britain that led me to invocar and in 1948 Bert Greaves, uh, he had a cousin who was severely injured in World War II, and he basically modified a motorcycle to turn it into a small car or a small vehicle for his injured cousin. And the narrative about this is very brief, but they say the British Ministry of Pensions basically adopted this idea and started creating these um these cars basically for people that were disabled and you can see the designs of these cars i'll show some photographs of them they are really really neat they're really intricate they're very low to the ground and they're very very fuel efficient obviously the ones that were electric uh, aren't really burning any fossil fuels at all and you'll find that um these were provided by the british government to um those that were disabled in war for free 
for absolutely free, um, you could apply and get one of these Invocars. And for a long time, it says up until about the 70s, the British government was producing these Invocars by the tens of thousands. And they all had, um, at least by the 70s, they all were made out of fiberglass. They were very nice. It was literally like a modern day car, very nice fiberglass. And they were all blue. So it was a, a vehicle that was completely owned by the British government. So they would all come in the same color. Everybody uh, would basically get the same one. There was none that was more advanced than the other one. Um, and the color of the car actually became known as Ministry Blue after the British Ministry of Pensions, who were creating these vehicles. I mean, they were very popular. They were everywhere in Britain. And I'm really making this video for us in the United States and us that aren't in Britain who may not have heard about this before because I find it to be very, very interesting. Now, as the story goes, in 2003, the British government recalled every single one of these Invocars. And they were able to do that and repossess all of them because they provided them out for free. So, as the story goes, they then scrapped every single one of these, and the only ones that still remain are ones that are in museums, or that the British government allowed to not be destroyed. And I just found that to be really interesting, because growing up, you know, as a kid in the 90s, um, not that I did a lot of research on Britain, but I never knew that they were providing these electric and motorized vehicles um, for their people this idea of small either gas or electric powered vehicles especially for those that were victims of war traveled around the world and i'm just going to show you a bunch of those photographs and these awesome designs of basically these mini carriages for the disabled